Hi folks, Melissa Ruther here with the Wisconsin K-12 Energy Education Program, or KEEP. Today we're out at the beautiful Boston School Forest. Boston School Forest is an 80-acre outdoor classroom that serves the Stevens Point Area School District. With our wonderful partners at Boston School Forest, we developed some activities for a family activity series. And since we can't be with you in person, we're going to bring those to you virtually so you can enjoy them whether in the classroom or at home. And today we're gonna to talk about solar ovens. Before we can get started, I would like to recognize that Boston School Forest occupies lands of the First Nations. With a passion for connecting people to their natural and cultural resources, I would like for us to take a moment and appreciate the land I'm on here at Boston School Forest, but also the land it's in on which you live and celebrate and honor the original people who stewarded this land for generations. Thank you. As we dive into the world of energy, it's good to remember where that energy is coming from. The Earth's largest source of energy is the sun, which is what we'll be exploring today. But first we have to ask ourselves, what do we normally use the sun for? Humans and other living things use the sun for many reasons. Take a moment and try and figure out, you can write it down or think about it in your head, try and figure out a few things that we and other living things use the sun for. A few of the ways that we as humans and other living things use the sun First and foremost, plants might use the sun to grow. Turtles or other cold-blooded animals might use the sun to keep warm. And as humans, we might use it for electricity. But there are so many other ways the sun is used by all living things. Even though there's so many ways humans and other living things use the sun, today we're gonna focus in on how we can use the sun to warm and or cook food. To do that, we are going to harness the solar power from the sun. We're gonna harness that solar energy and we're going to build solar ovens. Before we can build our solar oven, we have to gather some materials. First, you're going to need a shoe box or a pizza box. You're gonna need some kind of plastic wrap or cling wrap. Grab some aluminum foil or tin foil. You're going to need a box cutter or scissors, some black paper, some tape, a thermometer if you have one, a cooking thermometer, and grab an adult if you're going to be using any of these sharp objects. Grab your shoe box or pizza box. We're going to start by making a flap in the lid of your box. So whether you need to detach your lid or your lid is connected, find your lid and we are going to make three cuts on the outside, but we don't want to get too close to the edge. And then take your box cutter or your scissors and grab your adult if you need some help. And I'm going to make some guidelines just to help me cut around my box. But you can use a pen or a pencil to help you as well. And then cut along those three lines, those three sides of your lid. This lid is going to allow us to let sunlight into that box, into the solar cooker that we're building. Now we wanna make sure that the flap opens. Wiggle it around and you can make a crease in the back of the flap to assist you. Now we want to line this new opening with cling wrap or plastic wrap. So grab your plastic wrap or cling wrap and you want to cut a piece. I accidentally cut my piece way too big for this opening. That's okay though. What we want to make sure is that around all four sides we're able to secure that side or make a seal and we can use tape. Then with all of those sides that we have too much plastic, we can go ahead and we can fold that plastic under 
Again, we want to make sure we can make a seal. So fold that plastic under or over. And now we're going to use tape to secure those sides as well. And we want to do this for all four sides of our lid, of that opening, right? Doing this is actually going to let light in to your solar cooker. So what that means is that sunlight has a place to come in and then because of that great seal we're making, once heat is created, it's got nowhere to go. It will stay within your oven. Now when you open your lid, you're going to see that plastic wrap. Next, we want to line the inside of the lid, the inside of our box, and the flap that we created with aluminum foil. So first, we want to grab a piece of aluminum foil that's going to fit our lid. It's okay if that piece is too large. You can simply pull some of it off for later. If you still have ex excess around the edges, you can fold them under, and then we'll be able to secure our aluminum foil with some tape. Now we're going to line the inside of our lid with aluminum foil also. You can definitely use any of the scraps that you had left over, just like I did. When you're doing this, you want to make sure the aluminum foil isn't going to cover that awesome plastic opening that you made. We don't want this design to block the sun from getting into our solar oven, so make sure that your aluminum foil doesn't cover that plastic. What you'll want to do is add your pieces in and we're going to secure them just like we did with everything else with some tape. Just to make sure these pieces don't go anywhere. Now it's time to line the inside of our box. You want to make sure we get all four sides and the bottom covered. You can try and use one large piece, but it's okay if you have to use different smaller pieces. If you do have to use smaller pieces, like I am here, then you want to make sure that you overlap them. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. Why do we want to do that? We don't want to lose any of that heat. Remember, we want to make this as much like an oven we have at home as possible. So we want to make sure things are nice and sealed. And we want to make sure we don't lose any of that heat. And why all that aluminum foil? Well, that aluminum foil is going to direct that sunlight. So sun will bounce around and reflect off of it. And then that great flap we created will make sure it redirects back into the center of the box. Next it's time to add some black paper into the bottom. Make sure you cut the paper to where it fits nice and snug in the bottom. This great black paper will absorb the wonderful infrared radiation coming from the sun and will create the heat needed to heat up our solar oven. And there you have it. Put your lid on there nice and snug. You should be able to open up your flap. And we're ready to go.
Now that we've made our solar ovens, we need to figure out where are we going to put them. One of the biggest things you need to think about is that are there any trees or any really big things obscuring the sun or blocking the sun from making it to your solar oven? This is a perfect spot here at Boston School Forest, right by the solar array for us to put out a few different types of solar ovens. But for ours, we want to remember that this wonderful flap that we made also directs the light to where we can direct it to the center to try and get it as warm as possible in there. So you can use either um, a stick or a wooden spoon, any object you can find to prop open your lid and once your lid is propped open, you wanna find somewhere to put it. So when you put it on the ground, you wanna try and get it to where the sun is directly hitting this front face. If we turn it like this, there's probably not a lot of sun getting in there and it's not gonna get nearly as hot as it could have. So we wanna turn our box to where it's facing the sun. So if you're out on a long hike or you leave it for a while, or maybe your snack takes a really long time to warm up, you might have to come out here and tilt or turn your box to where it faces the sun throughout the day because the sun is always moving, right? So we wanna make sure we're getting as much light as possible. Not only do we have our wonderful shoebox cooker out here, but we've got a couple of other great examples too. You can also make your solar cooker out of a pizza box. You can use the same materials we used for our shoebox cooker. You can also add insulation, just like you can for that shoe box. And then there's also solar ovens and solar cookers that you can buy. The one we have here is really nice because it's really large, so you can put plenty of food in there. And what's nice about these is they get a little bit hotter than the ones that you would be making. So you can put um, some things that don't just need warming up, but maybe things like vegetables or whatnot that actually need to roast in there. Man, it's hot out here. It's supposed to be like 78 degrees today. It feels way hotter sitting out here in the sun. To figure out exactly how hot it is, we decided to put some thermometers out in the sun and in the shade just to see what it's like out here. So for our thermometer that's been hanging out in the sun, we're now at about 96 degrees. That's pretty warm. For our one sitting in the shade, which looks like it would have been a much better choice for me, is only at 81 degrees right now. So we've got a 96-ish and an 81. Let's see just how warm it is inside of our solar oven. Earlier today, we decided that we would make some s'mores. A really good choice since it got really hot. Inside of the solar oven, it's now about 225 degrees. 225 degrees. That's really hot. That's double what we saw with our air temperature. Why is that, you might be wondering? Just like in a greenhouse that keeps our plants growing all throughout the year, these wonderful ovens take in that light and keep that heat inside. So that's why it's much warmer inside there because that heat is trapped. Whereas out here, that heat is able to go all over the place. So it's much hotter inside of our oven than it is out here. Thank heavens, because it's very hot out today. So today we explored all about solar energy, how to build a solar oven or cooker with some found materials at home, how those materials can help us harness the energy, harness that solar power to heat or cook our food. And this is a really nice way to make your food during the summer or make your snacks during the summer without heating your house up, right? Because it's pretty warm out here. But enough about that. I think it's time to enjoy these wonderful s'mores that we made. Yeah, pretty great. <laughs>